I guess I got a 1 in 150 chance, right? Hopefully you know what I'm referring to. (laughs) If you don't, we always try to read a psalm. You know, the fact of the matter is, as I'm just thinking here, whatever psalm you read would be fine, right? I mean, every, 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 any psalm you read would be good, right? I mean, nobody can ever say there's a bad psalm, right? Nobody can ever say, oh, that was a bad verse. But, you know, for me, and I'm hopefully for you, I can't speak for you, but I don't want good, I want God, you know? So I, Bernadette and I were just talking about this. It's, it's, you can, you can be an expository preacher, which is the way to preach, actually. That was the way it was done in the Bible, Ezra got on a bima. Bima just means, it's Hebrew, means a raised platform, like, like pulpit, basically. And he got on a raised platform, and he started to speak the scriptures, and then he explained them. He didn't apply them. He didn't tell you how you can use them to make your life better. He, he just explained what God was saying to the people. No more, no less. Wouldn't that be great if we just read the scriptures and explained what God was saying to the people? As opposed to kind of massaging it and manipulating it for our purposes anyway that's a whole nother story that's a whole nother story but um yeah we can read any one but I'm, I'm tossing and turning between two and I'm really struggling isn't that awful why should I struggle what's the big deal you're not gonna know read them both well this is what I wanted to say to you while I was in prayer this morning um praying for certain things. Um, what would, what, I know there has to be certain prophetic things that take place. I mean, I was, for 20 years of my life, I was very involved in eschatology, and that was my thing. Eschatology, and it's, it's exciting, and everybody loves talking about Revelation and Daniel and Zechariah and, and the return of Messiah. Everybody loves that, so, so it was great. But then I, saw, then I saw that there was a need. There was too big of a need today for people's lives. And there was needs elsewhere. And so years ago, I kind of put eschatology aside a little bit. I still read it and study it. But I put it aside because what's the good of focusing on Messiah's return when, when you've got poor and widows and orphans that need help? And, and if you don't help them, then when he returns, you might not have the greatest of conversations. So that, was, that became my new focus about 10 years ago. Um, with that being said, what if today... The eastern sky did tear, and Yeshua came back. Well, I got to tell you, that applause was not impressive by no stretch of the imagination. I mean, oh, no, 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 it's too late, it's too late. It's too late. Think about it. I just said, what would happen? Do you understand the greatest thing that's going to happen is when Yeshua returns and some of you are are crying out for it some because you know you you really want Yeshua to return because you know that he's going to restore things but some of you are crying and 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 just for selfish reasons because your life is so rough that you just want him to come back and that's all right because either way he still gets the call to come back but you were like yeah hallelujah I mean Wow, that's very telling. That's almost like, that's almost like some people spending more time maybe this morning concerned about their outfit than they did in prayer. I mean, spending more time like, how does this match and what am I going to wear over actually sitting down and seeking the Lord? That wouldn't happen, right? So with that being said, I'm not going to read the psalm that I was going to read. Unless you can prove to me that along with the heavenly host, the myriad and myriad of angels, millions upon millions, the four living creatures, the 24 elders, the 62 million people who are dead and buried because they were preaching the gospel somewhere since Yeshua. Paul and the 12 disciples, Stephen, 
many others, guys like John Hess, who was burned at the stake for preaching the gospel and saying to the Church of England, uh-uh, we're not doing it your way, we're doing it this way. In, in their name, and in the name of Yeshua, what would you do if the eastern sky opened up today and Yeshua returned? Joe would play thunder on his, because the Lord knows the Lord's thunder won't be as good as that. <laughs> the Lord might even yell as soon as, Joe, play that thunder, because the thunder on, the thunder that I made, the thunder that I made does not compare to that. Speaking of that Jew, does anybody know much? We have some scientific people here. There's like six or seven doctors that come here. Does anybody know how, how hot the temperature of lightning is? Anybody? How much? No? It's hot. Um, lightning, I think, is 100,000 degrees Fahrenheit. You know how much energy it possesses? One million gigajoules power. I mean, I've seen lightning strike because I lived on the beach for 10 years. And when people get hit by it, they get burned up pretty instantaneously. And yet, when God finally sits down with this, and, and you caused this, Joe, so <laughs> this is on him. You know, you got to understand, if you just let the Lord be the Lord, he can use anything, anywhere, anytime, and he does it all the time. It's your, it's your job, guys, to see the Lord in everything. The sad part is, we think we need a worship service or a, to see him. He's, you don't, God doesn't need to put out more light. All the light is there. You need to figure out how to receive more light. It's all out there. Oh, God, send more of your glory. All his glory is out there. Lord, send more of your light. All his light is out there. You got to figure out how to get more of his glory and his light in you, not out of him. It's all out. But the greatest man ever to live is, without a doubt, is Job. Yes, he did crack, but he cracked far, far into his misery. We crack way, way before that, yes? So that's why he was the greatest guy. But even when he cracked, even though he was a, in, an amazing man of God, God still said, Job, we got to sit down because there is a vast difference between you and me, although you're amazing. You didn't really get who I am. And he sat him down, and then he started to really almost assail him until Job was nothing and then at the very end he said I spoke too soon forgive me a man with unclean lips I, I heard of you with the hearing of my ears but now I know you no matter what I teach today I cannot show you God with words with the greatest illustrations nobody can do that you're going to have to encounter him you're going to have to meet with him your desire and your expectation is going to be for his presence and then he'll come but God says something to Job, 100,000 degrees is lightning, 1 million, 1 billion gigajoules of energy. And he says, hey, Job, when you call the lightning, does it come before you and bow and say, here I am, master? Yikes. You know what power we're talking about? If lightning, which is so powerful, bows at the feet of God when he summons it, 
So if I were you, and I'm not you, I would get ready for Yeshua's return. I hope you're in a good mood because if you leave here today, listen to me, praise and worship team, people out there and everybody watching at home, if you leave the same, it is totally on you. Trust me, it is totally on you. It's not on the Lord. It's not on the message. You missed an opportunity to be changed. This is not a service. This is an encounter with the Spirit of God today. Adonai is king, robed in majesty. Adonai is robed and girded with strength. The world is well established, it cannot be moved. Your throne was established long ago, and you have existed forever. Adonai, the deep is raising up. The deep is raising its voice. The deep is raising its crashing waves. More than the sound of rushing waters or the mighty breakers of the sea, Adonai on high is mighty. Your instructions are very sure. Holiness befits your house. We can question him all day long, but I'm here to tell you he is perfect. If anybody has a right to question anybody, it should be him asking the questions. Adonai, holiness for all time to come. Hallelujah and hallelujah. <laughs> Guys, it is, it is right. It is just right. There's right and wrong in everything. There's no gray areas. And it is so right. If anything was right, it is so right to worship God. There is nothing more right in the universe for human beings to do to worship God. And you know, I had a revelation today, which you'll probably say, really? I get it. But you know what the Lord told me in prayer? And maybe it's just for me. So if you get nothing out of this, you can, you can you by all means, write or call and say, thanks for wasting two minutes. But if you're walking with God and your walk with him is, Lord, um, I want my life to be good. I want to be protected. I want to prosper. I want to have peace. This is what I want so bad from you. You're going to be very, very unhappy in life. But if your walk with God is, Lord, my very purpose is to glorify your name in the earth and to be a blessing to everybody I come in contact with, you're going to be incredibly happy. So just know, if you go with the former, you're going to be frustrated constantly. Some moments you're going to be happy, the next moment you're going to be sad. Some days good, some days bad. But if you go with the latter... You're going to stay content as long as you understand your purpose, which is to glorify God's name in all the earth and to be a blessing to everyone we come in contact with. Wow, what a mission statement, huh? Sounds biblical. So, Father, with that in mind, I, I ask you humbly on behalf of our congregation and behalf of everybody watching and home and all around the world to, to receive what so rightly do you according to who you are. Receive our heartfelt worship. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Shabbat shalom, guys.